Hey bag maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thanks so much for joining me for the show. Um, before Danny starts getting, oh, here we go. Uh, Deb is watching from Maryland. Sandy's watching from Oregon and Mary from Texas. So welcome everyone. Um, a couple of things before we get started. My usual spam reminder. So if you're watching over on Facebook, I never send messages through private messages um, using, oftentimes what happens is they kind of use our avatar to make it look like it's so sweetness and then send private messages over on Facebook. Oftentimes asking for information like phone number, credit card number, sometimes even to wire money in exchange for receiving a prize. So um, we never take in money for prizes or shipping, anything like that. The prizes are shipped for free. So if you see anything like that over on Facebook, please report and or block it. If you're watching on YouTube, if you've left a comment on the show and see a reply to your comment, which uh, appears to be a So Sweetness, again, avatar, either asking for credit card information, asking you to send money, anything like that, please report and block that. I always announce the winner's name verbally on the show, and we also have the winner's name um, in the description uh, near the top. Uh, next reminder, um, everything that I've purchased, uh, everything that I'm sharing on Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. All right, so for, for the notion of the week, I actually whoa, whoa. wanted to, did I forget about something? All right, so for the notion of the week, I actually wanted to talk about a bit of new hardware that we just received due to popular requests. I had a lot of requests for um, metal zipper ends. So before I show you what those look like in the overhead, I pulled out this chickadee backpack. And as you can see, it's got uh, fabric on one end covering the raw cut edge of the zipper. So the zipper ends can be used in place of this little fabric piece over here. So Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera. So we have them in all six hardware colors. We have light gold, rose gold. Um, if you see the holes, that's just the back of the piece of hardware. Um, antique brass, gunmetal, silver, and then the rainbow. Um, they'll fit an assortment of different zippers and you'll just want to test it in the, the zipper end first uh, before you make it permanently in place and here's what the opening looks like so this is where the cut end of the zipper will go inside and where there's a hole in the back you'll just use a screw to screw that in place so I've got my screwdriver so I could demonstrate that also just optional you can put a little dab of glue on the inside first before you insert the zipper end and before you uh, finish out the screw, um, that just provides a little bit of extra security. So I've got a few different zippers here. Let's start with this store-bought zipper. So you want to use the zipper ends on the end of the zipper. So when the zipper's closed, it'll be on the end that's opposite where the zipper head is. So you'll want to cut off the metal zipper stop first. And then you'll just want to fold it so that it looks pleasing to your eye. This is a number three zipper, so it's a little bit uh, less wide zipper tape than the handbag zipper, which I'll show you in just a second. So you can fold it to your preference. Also, if you want to add some fray block on there first uh, or a seam sealant of your choice and let it dry completely, you can do that just so it doesn't start fraying. So you want to test it. So this is the right side of the zipper, and I'm going to insert it so that it is in the end where this zipper end kind of starts to slope so that's the right side of the zipper end and you'll just want to test it out so insert it see how it looks if you're pleased with it go ahead and pull it out and then if you are using the optional glue you can use uh, beacon three-in-one or fabric tack um, just put a little drop inside 
and then you'll be inserting the end of the zipper. So what you'll do on the back side, these screws are very tiny, so be very careful you don't lose track of them. I've got one of Danny's little screwdrivers over here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just insert that, that screw. And that's what it looks like once it's inserted. So I'll do the same thing with, um, I have a handbag zipper over here, so the tape is wider in the handbag zipper. And again, you'll just wanna fold it and do a test to see how you like how it looks once you've inserted it based on how you folded it. Okay, so I kinda like how that looks. And again, you'll just secure the screw just like I did before with the, the number three zipper. And these are a really great way to add some extra professional look to your bags. Like I mentioned with that Chiggity backpack, you can use it in place of a fabric zipper tab. Also, depending on what pattern you're working from, even though for this demonstration, I've inserted the zipper ends on the bottom edge of the zipper, if you're, the pattern you're working with calls for, say, having a finished fabric zipper end on both edges, you could also do it for this edge as well. I would recommend perhaps a basting stitch back and forth a few times just to kind of hold the zipper tape pieces together and then cut off the metal zipper end and you'll just be inserting it the same like with the bottom edge of the zipper. So we have these in stock right now in the shop and I've got a link in the description in case you're interested in checking them out after the show. Uh, we sell them in a pack of four. So four zipper ends and four screws uh, will be included in the pack. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments, um, what type of zipper do you use most often? Do you maybe use uh, number five zipper by the yard. Do you like using store-bought zippers? Um, maybe a number five or a number 4.5 where uh, the metal zipper stops are present. Maybe you like double pull zippers. Maybe you like working with number three zippers. Let me know in the comments what your favorite type of zipper is to use for your bag and pouch sewing projects. Um, so the Today is the beginning of the Enigma pouch sew along. So this is week one, it's a three week sew along. I have um, the link in the description. Oh, oh, wrong, wrong picture, Danny. Nope, nope. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Nope, there was no picture for this one, I but. From last week I was gonna use it. That's totally fine. Um, I have a link in the description to the blog post for week one. And week one's assignment is to choose your fabric for the Enigma pouch, cut out your fabric and interfacing and quilt your bottom, your lining bottom panel. So that's up to step number two in the instructions. Once you've completed up to step two, just snap a quick photo of um, your progress. So it can be a photo of your pieces cut out. It could be a photo of your lining bottom that's quilted. Snap a photo and you can upload it on my blog uh, for the week one blog post. And thank you, Danny. Uh, so here's the schedule in case you haven't seen it yet. Um, every week, I'll be posting a new blog post where, which you'll be able to upload your progress photo and then at the end uh, photos of all of your completed Enigma pouches and there will be randomly drawn prizes every week. So um, I, I'm excited to see a lot of people already uploading their photos. If you need help uploading your photo, perhaps you tried and had some difficulty, feel free to email me sarah at sosweetness.com. Danny's going to put my email address up on the screen and um, I'd be happy to help you or Bronwyn who also answers emails. Um, either one of us would be happy to help you get your photo uploaded if you're having any difficulty. All right, so some new fabric that I've added to my stash this week is from three different fabric lines. I'm going to have Danny switch to the overhead camera. I guess I'm really thinking about birds lately because lots of birds are coming through either from migration or getting their nests all put together. So I have a few different uh, bird themed fabrics that I picked up from Hawthorne Supply Company. I really love the uh, goldfinches. In winter, they're looking a little bit drab, but as soon as spring rolls around, they're kind of molting into their summer look, so to speak, with the, the yellow feathers. 
I also found this really cute chipmunk fabric and I picked up these two actually. I was thinking maybe for a pouch, this one for the exterior, this one for the lining. Super cute, really love the chipmunks. And then I got a couple of Rifle Paper Company fabrics. Actually, Danny, could you switch to a further out zoom for this one? That's as far as we got. Oh, that's the farthest? Okay. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, these two are actually canvas. Um, the reason I picked these up in canvas is because sometimes in canvas, um, the canvas print is a larger design of the same print in, say, a quilting cotton. So... I always really like the large scale prints, so that's why I picked these up in the canvas, but similar prints are also available in quilting cotton, just a smaller scale in case you prefer using quilting cotton for your projects. And I've linked to all of these fabrics in the description in case you're interested in checking them out after the show. So speaking of birds, I have a question for you. Let me in the, know in the comments, uh, what is your favorite bird? So, um, I saw actually a new bird the other day I was checking out this sounds a little silly, but I every day I go on in my garden a few times a day and I kind of look around. Not that I'm expecting the plants to grow all that much within a few hours, but I, I always come across things that I missed in the previous kind of walkthrough. And I saw a migrating bird just coming through Illinois, not, not nesting or stopping along the way. It was a yellow rumped warbler. And I saw, this is the first time I've seen this bird in person, and I was really surprised to see it in my yard thought that was super awesome and just just amazing all of the things you can find in wildlife if you're either not looking or if you're just spending some time outside so nature I, I think nature is just wonderful all right um besides the so long we also have a separate event which is the may challenge and every month starting with this month we'll have a challenge posted to the blog with two options. So the first option for this month is the Enigma pouch. If you're participating in the Enigma pouch sew along, you can sort of double dip, uh, make your Enigma pouch for the sew along as well as the challenge because they are both separate. The second option for this month's challenge is to make a sew sweetness project that you intend to use for travel or a vacation. So Really, it could be anything, um, maybe an airplane bag, may, maybe an Aragon bag. Um, there is a separate link in the description for the May Challenge. And again, there's the two options for the May Challenge. And um, there's also prizes for the challenge as well. And those are also both uh, randomly drawn. So Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show when he's not on it, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness Squad. Danny and I both really appreciate you tuning into the show and um, thank you so much for being here. All right, so in lieu of the book review for this week, I do have a book to review, but I also have a quilt pattern and a quilt kit that I picked up that just came in the mail actually yesterday. So I guess I lucked out that I got it in time to share it with you on the show. Um, I'm gonna have Danny switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you both the quilt pattern and um, the book. So the quilt pattern is from Pen and Paper Patterns and it comes with three different variations. I'm yeah, I'm just going to switch. Uh, I, guess I'll get, I guess I'll give you a little peek to the instructions on the inside. Um, the instructions are full color illustrations, but here are the three different variations to the quilt. Danny, is there a closer zoom by any chance? Perfect. Okay, so there's three different options. This option with the ladybugs. Oh, wow. Awesome. Um, the first option with the ladybugs and the flowers. Option B is just all flowers. And then option C is a smaller quilt. This one's 45 and a half inches by 56 inches. And it's just less ladybugs and less flowers. So Danny could switch back to the, the other zoom. I decided to, because I really... Um, don't ha always have a great time choosing fabrics for a project. I just went with the fabrics um, on the cover of the quilt with one minor thing that I swapped out. So um, the fabrics came in the mail yesterday, so I'm really excited to get them cutting out, cut out um, maybe, probably tomorrow. I decided to swap out this one fabric for this one because I thought they were both orange and kind of close in color. And I just pulled this uh, Kona lipstick out of my stash instead. I, 
I will often do that. I like purchasing quilt kits, but once in a while I'll swap out like one fabric or maybe two. Um, but generally I just like to stay with the, the same fabrics from the kits. But I'm, again, really excited. I already read through the pattern. Looks pretty straightforward for cutting out. I like the sort of vintage uh, theme, I guess, of the pattern. So looking forward to making that. And then the book review for this week is a book called uh, Quilt Your Own Adventure. And this is actually a really different book than I've seen before. There's a lot of, besides the blocks inside the book, there's, as you can see from the cover, math tables. So math is not my friend. So I got this book and was really excited because I think I'll be able to use it as a reference tool for uh, maybe quilt blocks in the future if I want to make smaller or bigger blocks, um, things like that. Danny, I like how you laughed when I said math was not my friend. It's true, though. Uh, so I bookmarked a few pages just to show you from the quilt. Um, the first section is working with different um, quilt top layouts, um, using different color suggestions. As always with any craft book, the first few chapters are techniques and different supplies recommended to make the projects. And here's the block index. Actually, Danny, I'm not sure if zooming in makes sense, but maybe it will. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's too close, but that's fine. That's fine. So these are all of the block instructions in the book. And there's also some quilt projects in the book that will make use of these blocks. So Danny could switch to the regular zoom out. Thank you. So I didn't want to flip through all of the blocks just because um, there's a lot of specific cutting instructions, but I just wanted to show you these for examples. This is very easy to understand. Um, what size pieces to cut out, everything's illustrated, and there's different block and row examples that you can make use of this block, and you can see those over here, which I thought was really useful, especially for different borders and things. Um, I thought that was really neat. So this whole center section is all the instructions for the quilt blocks, and here's where all the, the math comes into place. If you are increasing the size of your blocks, um, all of this is included and actually there's a lot of pages just dedicated to the math. So it's not quite 100 pages dedicated to the math, but as you can see, like it's a lot of pages. So I'm not going to flip through all that because that would be pretty boring, but let's get to the, the quilt projects now. So the quilt projects use any number of, of the blocks that were in the beginning portion of the book, starting with this little baby size quilt. So as you can see, just a minimum amount of blocks and you have a little quilt if you need one for a baby shower gift perhaps. This uses a few more blocks from the front of the book and then later on we'll be getting to some more like sampler sampler style quilts as well. So I really love this one. Actually there's three quilts in this book that I really like. This is the first one I like. I loved this one. I love the different shades of solids love the borders and then this is the is this the cover quilt yeah this is the cover quilt i like this little sampler quilt um, lots of different blocks used i'm a big fan of solids so this one really struck me as well and then what's left in the book there's some more charts in the back of the book but these are all of the projects so I would say if, if you're not a math person, you like maybe designing your own quilts, um, changing sizes of quilt blocks, this might be a book to uh, check out, especially because all of the math tables, like I mentioned, is in the book. <laughs> Elaine said, is math anyone's friend? Well, Danny's pretty good at math, so I would say maybe math is Danny's friend, but um, I've linked to this book in the description in case you're interested in checking it out after the show. All right, Danny, are you ready? Okay, I guess our little bag lab graphic did not work, but um, it is time for tonight's bag lab. Today I wanted to talk about, because I've gotten questions about this recently, how to use insulated fleece. 
Um, I did use insulated fleece in a recent project, this uh, Sprinkles Baking Tote, because it's meant to, to tote along either casseroles or baking dishes. Perhaps they're hot, perhaps they're cold. Um, I used insulated fleece for um, the lining of the Sprinkles Baking Tote. So if you're cutting your insulated fleece the same size as the fabric, you can go ahead and just cut it the same size and baste it in place. Um, but in this particular pattern, I wanted to reduce bulk in the seams, and so I cut the insulated fleece smaller than the fabric on purpose. And um, because it's smaller and it's not fusible, what to do um, for this particular pattern, I machine quilted the insulated fleece to the lining. And so tonight's demonstration is showing how to do that. So it's a nice quick demonstration, but I thought might, might be useful if you wanted to add insulated fleece to some of your projects, so enjoy. Now go ahead and pull out one of your lining main panels and this piece should already have the shape flex interfacing attached to the wrong side. We're going to be drawing some vertical lines on the right side of this fabric because we'll be using those vertical lines to quilt the insulated fleece to the wrong side of this fabric. Because the insulated fleece is cut to the same size as the shape flex, uh, it's not a fusible interfacing so we need to use this machine quilting to attach the insulated fleece to the lining main panel. So I'm going to start by taking out my paper pattern piece and drawing a line down the center. And I recommend using chalk. I'm using a sew line pen. You can use Clover Chaco. Your preferred chalk, whichever you prefer is fine. So I'm going to be drawing vertical lines each two inches apart. And I recommend, especially if you're a machine, if you're a machine quilter, I recommend just going with the, the two inch vertical lines, not quilting it densely, because I haven't accounted for extra shrinkage for these pieces. So I wanna try to keep the machine quilting as far enough apart while still being able to attach that insulated fleece well. And if you're making baking dish D, you'll be doing the same thing. Obviously your piece will just be round and if your fabric is directional, just make sure that the, the top of the print is at the top of the circle. Okay, so now I'm going to take the insulated fleece and you'll notice one side just looks like white fleece and one side looks like a silver finish. You'll want to place the silver finish on your table face up and then lay your lining bottom panel directly underneath. Oh, sorry, directly on top. And make sure that the insulated fleece is centered. So you can use some traditional pins or if you have some of these jumbo wonder clips, those are great to hold the fabric in place. We'll be quilting from the center outward. I prefer doing that because if you start quilting on one end and work your way across, sometimes the fabric really shifts. And so I, I generally like to quilt from the center outward. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the center. I'm gonna quilt these lines over here, and then I'm going to keep the fabric in the same orientation and then quilt the lines going toward the left side and we'll also be stitching about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the insulated fleece just to make sure that the ends are held down as well. For this machine quilting I'm going to be stitching with a slightly lengthened stitch length for my regular stitch length. On my machine my regular stitch length is two and a half millimeters and I'll be machine quilting using three millimeters. And 
and make sure everything is nice and smooth as you work your way toward the right side. And then I'm just going to flip this over so that I can stitch just the end portion down. Okay, now I'm going to quilt the left hand side. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration about using insulated fleece in your lining. Have you used insulated fleece before for a project? Let me know in the comments uh, what you used it for and if you liked using it. All right, so I'm going to be answering some questions live in just a minute. So if you have a question for me, um, you can answer it, ask it in the comments right now, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. It can be a general sewing question, question about a notion or tool, um, bag making related question or maybe you have a question about something in my sewing history uh, go ahead and ask your question in the comments right now um, before we get over to the questions I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway and that winner is Christy Katona congratulations to you Christy please email me after the show so that I can get you connected with your prize and again my email is sarah at sosweetness.com Danny's going to put it up on the screen one more time um, additionally, if you ever have a question, um, feel free to email me at that same email address. All right. Um, oh, Danny mentioned during that zipper end demonstration, several people asked about that um, screwdriver. We'll actually talk about that next week on the show when Danny's on the show. That's actually Danny's screwdriver. So I have to use it and give it back so that it doesn't get misplaced or lost. <laughs> Debbie says, is it required to cut the interfacing on the Enigma pouch smaller than the fabric? That's a good question, Debbie. Um, I've made it both ways. I The reason I cut the interfacing smaller on the bottom panel of the Enigma pouch is that things get quite thick. At the end, when you're attaching the binding, the binding has to go over the zipper. And so I personally just felt it easier uh, to keep that interfacing out of the seam allowance so that I could have a less stressful time attaching that binding by machine. Uh, Marilee says, what kind of marking pencil are you using? I, you know, I looked down when that was demonstration was playing, but I have a few different ones that I'll pull out that I've been using lately. Let me see if I could find the other one. Okay, it's missing, but I'll show you one of them that I have here. Um, the other one's made by the same company. Um, I guess I'll just show it on the front screen. This is the, nope, oh, here we go. 
Soline Pencil Trio. Actually, Danny, I think it'll be better to switch to the overhead camera just so I can show all the different colors. Thank you. Okay, so it's got some writing over here in the middle. WH for white chalk, which I think my white chalk's out. Um, BL, if you point the, what is this called? This little piece of metal. If you point that at the BL, then you have um, sort of pencil colored chalk, black, and then PL is for pink, or PI is for pink. There, I got some pink over there, just in case you like using different colors. The different colors are, help, are helpful because um, depending on the color of your fabric, if you're using a darker fabric, obviously the white chalk works great. If you're using a lighter fabric, you might want to go with either the, the pink or the black. And again, you just twist it for the color that you want. We have these in the shop as well as the single color Soline pens. Um, the single color, we have those in white. Uh, we have the refills for both of these as well. Um, I feel like I used either one of these in, in that video demonstration. Uh, Michelle's, Michelle Grace says, any suggestions for marking on vinyl? Um, chalk doesn't work or fabric marking pen didn't for some reason. Vinyl. I'm not sure if you meant clear vinyl. For clear vinyl, actually, I use a ballpoint pen just because it writes well on the clear vinyl and I can see it really easily. Um, if you're talking about just other vinyl that's not clear vinyl, um, I actually have used the friction pens on the wrong side of the fa Generally, I'm marking on the wrong side of the fabric just in case I make a mistake. Um, I don't have to worry about it. Um, but in the past, I have used friction pens on the wrong side of other vinyl that's not clear vinyl. Angela says, do you ever have a shift funny quilting from one side only? Yes, definitely. Um, that's why in that demonstration, I did my best to quilt from the center to the right and then from the center to the left. Um, I remember distinctly a project that I made a lot of years ago. It was a table runner and I was doing some really dense quilting, straight line quilting, and I started quilting on the right side. By the time I got to the left side, it was no longer a rectangle table runner. It was more like a, kind of like, you know, kind of like that. So <laughs> definitely quilting from the center outward is better for getting more even um, machine quilting. I'm not a machine quilting expert, but that's just uh, from personal experience, I would say. Julie says, use a silver pen for marking on vinyl. Oh, that's a good tip. Um, I don't have it right here on the table with me, but Tandy Leather has a leather marking pen. It's actually white. I feel like it's ink. It, it's similar to a ballpoint pen, but it's white. Um, and again, that's on the Tandy Leather website. I would suggest maybe going to Tandy Leather and check for marking pens, but it is white um, ink that comes out. Kim says, would it be possible on future patterns to have photos of the completed project at the beginning with each piece labels labeled as to what that section is? That's a good tip. Let me write that down. I'll think it through, see if I can um, have a picture depicting all of those features. I can understand that would be helpful, especially if you're mixing and matching several fabrics um, instead of using, say, one fabric for all of your exterior. Um, Sarah says, Sarah, do you always cut your interfacing um, a quarter inch or half inch smaller? Not all the time. A lot of times I'll cut it the same size as the fabric. I guess it depends on the project and how I feel when I'm sewing up the original prototype. Like I mentioned with the Enigma pouch, um, I decided to keep the interfacing out of the seam allowance because I had a wasn't impossible. It was just a little bit difficult with all of that bulk and then finishing up the binding, having the binding go over the zipper because you're um, having binding cover the ends, cut ends of the zipper also. Um, so yeah, I guess I kind of see how I feel about that initial prototype. And there's other instances in the past where I've also done that with some of the pieces, not all of the pieces, the Park Sling backpack is um, another good example. There's one or two pieces where I cut the foam interfacing smaller than um, the fabric, and that's um, another reason is to minimize bulk for, for areas that are sewn, which I felt were a little bit trickier when I kept the interfacing the same size as the fabric. 
Margo says, could mesh be used instead of rip sap for the mannequins for a water bottle bag? Let's see. I have it behind me. So for this uh, top portion, I used rip stop fabric. Um, mesh. I guess you could. I don't see why you couldn't. Um, it's such a small amount of rip stop. Um, I personally haven't tried it with the mesh. Yeah, I'd, you might want to just... Maybe because it uses just a small piece of mesh, especially if you have some at home in your stash and you don't have to buy it specifically for this. I might just suggest, because it goes in sort of near the end of the pattern, this particular piece, the ripstop, I might suggest cutting it, pinning it in place, and then kind of seeing how you like how it feels and how it looks. Um, and then if, if you don't care for it after you've pinned it in place, you can just remove it and... Um, replace it with the ripstop fabric instead. Um, this particular pattern, this aqua part at the top is the only part that uses the ripstop. And the reason I chose that is so when it cinches, it's like a nice smooth closure. I tried to do this part on the top originally with quilting cotton and it was really stiff and I didn't care for how it closed at the top. And so um, went with the ripstop fabric instead. Sarah says, Sarah, do you prefer the pen over the chalk marking? Um, I really use all of them depending on what I need it for. When I'm cutting out fabric pieces, I like using the friction pens. If I need to mark on the right side of the fabric, meaning an area that might be seen in the finished bag, I'll use um, either the sew line pencil trio, I'll use my clover chaco, which is somewhere around here, or I'll use that other sew line that I mentioned that only had the white chalk. So for instance, when I was making this um, sprinkles baking tote, I needed to mark on the right side of the fabric placement for the handles on the front and the back. And for this, I used white chalk just because the chalk will brush off when the project is finished. Rather than the friction pens, sometimes with the friction pens, um, even though you mark with the pens and then use your iron to remove the markings. Sometimes they either leave sort of a faint um, opaque trace on your fabric or if it gets really hot or really cold, sometimes the markings will come back. And so that's why I like to generally avoid the friction pens for an area of the fabric that might be seen in the finished bag. So if it's an area like if I'm marking for magnetic snaps, those markings will be covered when the bag is finished by the actual snap piece. And so for that, I'd be okay using the friction pens. I guess it just depends on what the specific application is and will I see it when the bag is finished. Um, Jackie says, is the pen refillable? So the friction pens are not refillable, but the sole line pens, the two different ones we stock, are refillable and we do sell the refill packs in the shop. The, the refills are just like uh, little packs of the lead that you just replace. Um, Stephanie says, do the markings from that Soline pencil just brush off? They actually do. Um, for this one, I think I used the Soline pencil rather than the Clover Chaco, and it takes a little bit more effort to brush it off the fabric than the Clover Chaco, but I like that it's um, more of a thin, precise line. Um, so yes, it does, it does brush off. Um, after a while. And by the way, talking about the Clover Chacos, I don't care to use the different colors in Clover Chaco. I've had a bad experience in the past with trying to use the pink, the yellow, the silver, actually the blue, all the colors. And they, I wasn't able to get them to come off when the project was finished. Um, and this was using quilting cotton. So I just recommend the white Clover Chacos. Um, Cindy says washable Crayola markers are great for vinyl and leather. Oh, that's a good tip. I wouldn't have thought of that. Thank you, Cindy. Um, also, I've had disasters with Crayola washable markers that did not wash off, so just a heads up. Okay, so I guess your mileage may vary. If you're using something, a marking tool that's new to you, be sure to test it on a scrap of fabric first before you move on to um, the fabric that we, the portion that you'll be using to cut out um, the actual fabric for the bag. Suzanne says, can you iron the fabric after using insulated? Um... I don't recall off the top of my head. I feel like I saw someone say recently on a show that it shouldn't be ironed, but I'm not 100%. Um, 
if you know the answer to Susan's question, Suzanne's question, please let us know in the comments and Danny will try to look out for your comment to post it up on the screen. Arthur says, was your Kona lipstick fabric the same lipstick as Annie's zippers, mesh, and fold over elastic? That is a good question. Where did I put that fabric? I'm guessing no, because I'm guessing, if I had to guess, Kona, which is made by Robert Kaufman, I'm not confident that by Annie's is using um, the same like color card for those colors. I'm trying to see if I have anything with the red mesh over here. Lipstick. Oh, it's lipstick. No, actually, no. The lipstick is like a pinky color. So if you're using the By Annie zippers, it's like a, this is raspberry, but it's very close looking to raspberry. It's just more of a pinkish shade. The reason I'm, oh, I have one on the ground. Let me grab it. Hang on. Okay. Good question. Um, Danny, can you switch to the overhead camera for just one second? So here's the lipstick Kona, and here's, let me take it out of the package. Yeah, one's red, one's pink. Yeah, yeah one's, the lipstick from By Annie is pink. So as you, well, I don't know if it's showing up well on camera, but this is pink. This is clearly pink, and this There's is something clearly like red. Color in the middle. Um, got this yellow fabric, maybe. Is that a good contrast? I don't know. Yeah, take my word for it, but this is clearly pink. Thanks, Danny. If you want to quilt a bag first, do you layer the SF-101 foam and lining together and quilt prior to cutting out the pieces? This is a good question, and this will depend on the pattern you're using and what they're directing you to in the pattern. I know a lot of the By Annie's patterns do have the sandwich with the foam in the middle, exterior foam, and then lining. Um, I would say majority of my patterns do not have that quilt sandwich. Um, I guess an easy answer is I do have a free video on my YouTube channel on how I quilt fabric for a bag. And in this demonstration, I use the exterior fabric and the foam and I cut those uh, slightly larger than was necessary, quilted, and then trimmed them down to the actual size needed for the pattern after quilting. So if you'd like to check out that video, you can find that on my YouTube channel or website. Um, on, YouTube, on the So Sweetness YouTube, you can just search um, quilt fabric for a bag, and I'm, I'm sure that video will come up. Sarah says, I made clothes, then quilts, but now I have done about 12 handbags and have told everyone that wants one to watch your channel. Thank you so much, Sarah. Anybody can do it if you put your mind to it. Thanks for the tips and tricks. I totally agree. I feel like it's a one section at a time as far as my patterns go. Just complete one section. It might be 10 steps. It might be less than 10 steps. All you need to do is finish that one section. Then the next day or the next time you have time to sew more, just complete another section. And before you know it, you'll have a finished pouch or bag. And I know you'll be so proud of yourself for um, finishing that project. Melissa says, according to the Insel Fleece Pollen website, and it can be warm ironed. Thank you so much, Melissa. I really appreciate you. I knew someone would have the answer for us. All right, it looks like Danny is calling it on the questions. So if <clears throat> I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but I will be back again next Sunday answering more questions, and Danny will be on the show next Sunday as well. One last thing to get to is uh, the giveaway for tonight, and the giveaway is one 18 by 54 inch piece of cork fabric. You can choose the color from my website. I made um, the Oriole bag, which was my, one of my favorite cork projects, in candy red cork, and it's really stunning and it's super bright. So I wanted to share some of your Oriole bag projects that you've made. Um, these coming from the Facebook group. Amy made these two Oreo bags with um, vinyl for the flap and then a cotton print for the body of the bag. I think they look super. They turned out awesome. And I love the double stra sided strap that she added um, to both of the Oreo bags. Next one up is Andrea made this cat themed Oreo bag with a coordinating uh, twist lock on the flap. I, th I thought that was super awesome. Augusta made one in a houndstooth uh, wool print fabric and with a little handmade tag on the flap. Beautiful. I, 
Sorry, what did you say? Quilting on the flat, too. Oh, yes, I do see the quilting. The quilting looked awesome. Um, Elizabeth made this one with um, some orange flowers on the front. I really love the print, and this bag really just stood out so well. Fantastic job. Hazel made this beautiful purple and pink floral Oreo bag. Super cute. By the way, this pattern comes in two different sizes, small and large. Um, so in case you need um, a smaller bag, that's an option too. Mary made hers with quilting for the flap. The quilting really makes this one on the flap. I, I really love the quilting. Another vinyl version is from Michelle who used um, light green vinyl, added a tassel, made a little key fob to go with it. Turned out fantastic. Nicole Ann made this Oreo bag and she's modeling it here just so you can get an idea of um, the scale of the bag. Looks super cute. Love the smile on her face too. And then we have one more um, this one was made with black vinyl as well by Yana and again love the monogrammed um, clip on the side and the tassel looks fantastic. So the Oreo bag is actually a free pattern and video. I've linked to the Oreo bag pattern and video in um, the description of the show and I also have a separate video about sewing darts in case you need a, a little bit of extra direction sewing darts or perhaps you're working on a different bag project that has some darts but you need a little help with that. Um, that um, technique video on the darts is um, linked to in the description as well. All right so again that give giveaway prize was an 18 by 54 inch piece of cork. Um, you choose the color. Um, it will be one randomly drawn winner you have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show. We um, add up all the comments from Facebook and YouTube and I will announce the winner on next Sunday's show and I have an extra bonus question um, that you can answer over in the comments for an extra method of entry. Which interfacing do you use most often? So let me know in the comments um, either which one you use most often or which one is your favorite. I'm interested in checking out which everyone's favorite interfacing is. Thank you so very much for tuning into Social Sunday, Danny, and I both really appreciate you I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.